brand new Acer Swift 14 AI laptop is not powered by Intel or AMD, but rather Qualcomm. It's a Snapdragon X Plus processor, and that means we're looking at Windows 11 on ARM. Is that any good? But why would you listen to me? Let's ask the AI. Enable microphone. Hey there, co-pilot. Is Windows 11 on ARM any good? Windows 11 on ARM has been receiving positive feedback, especially with the latest advancements in ARM processors. Here are some key points. Performance improvements. The latest Snapdragon X Elite ARM processors from Qualcomm have shown significant performance improvements. To be honest, I think I can probably do a better job than AI. So let's shut this down. And we'll crack on with a review from Kit Guru rather than the cloud. It's inevitable this review is going to focus on the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Plus system on chip. However, let's first address the Acer laptop itself. It's thin and it's light. It weighs in at 1.3 kilos and you need to add 350 grams for this USB-C charger. Annoyingly, the charger, when it's plugged into the mains, has this power brick somewhere in the middle. So that might end up dangling in free space. But if your power brick is sitting on a desk, that's absolutely fine. The good thing about the charger is you probably won't need it. The battery in this laptop is absolutely mighty. 75 watt hours, if you're doing video playback, it lasts for 27 hours. If you're doing regular work, which will typically be browser based on ARM, that's my experience at any rate, you can expect to have all day battery life. The screen measures 14.5 inches on the diagonal, 2560 by 1600 resolution. It's a 120 hertz IPS panel and it's rated at 400 nits of brightness. In this light, it's absolutely fine. It's turned down. What is the brightness right now? Currently it's at 73%. Let's crank it up all the way. Looks like that. Take it down to 50%. And it looks like that. I have HW Info for ARM running. It understands the SOC reasonably well. However, ARM is something of a mystery. In the course of this review, I've had two big Windows updates. I've also done a BIOS update. Software seems to update. It's quite clear that behind the scenes, ARM for Windows, it's being updated, I'd say almost on a daily basis actually. Lots going on. Various bits of software may simply choose not to work. So CPU Z seems to be fine. GPU Z not so sure. HW Info Martin is clearly doing an absolutely fine job. One thing you will not see in HW Info at the moment is how much power the processor is drawing. We saw this during my recent visit to Berlin with Intel just before IFA kicked off for the Lunar Lake launch. They had a number of laptops being demoed from AMD, from Intel and powered by Qualcomm. Intel was using a nifty USB-C power meter to demonstrate what was happening in terms of power draw. They could use software to analyze the SOC within both Intel and AMD Qualcomm was something of a black box. They could show the power going in, they couldn't show how that power was being used. And that was Intel, so we reviewers don't really have much of a chance. Hopefully Qualcomm will release more information and open up the internal workings of their SOCs. But right now, I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. But let's get back to the specification of the Swift 14 AI. The processor is a Qualcomm Snapdragon X Plus, the specific model X1P-64-100. That means it has 10 cores operating up to 3.4 gigahertz. The graphics are Qualcomm Adreno 741. The NPU, the bit that does the AI, is a Qualcomm Hexagon. We have 16 gigabytes of onboard memory. It's LP DDR5X, rated at 8533. The SSDs are one terabyte WD SN5 which is QLC. We have Wi-Fi 7 powered by Qualcomm, naturally. 
the audio is also by Qualcomm. And then when it comes to ports and connectors, on the left hand side, we have two USB 4 Type C rated at 40 gigabits per second and one USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A. On the right hand side, we have a second USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A and we have a headphone jack. If you're looking for a new chair, then you should definitely check out Boolies. I'm currently sat on their Ninja Pro gaming chair, which is one of three models from their gaming series alongside the Elite and the Master. So if you're looking for something new to stick in your setup that you can sit on and game and work, then I recommend definitely checking out Boolies.co.uk. One aspect of the Acer that leaves me unimpressed, keyboard and touchpad. They function perfectly well, they just feel a bit average. This is a relatively budget laptop. It's priced at £1,200 here in the UK. Nonetheless, the keyboard is important. Also the touchpad, and you'll notice there we have a little light. That is the AI is working light. A neat little gimmick, but nonetheless, the feel and the function, merely average. And then we look at the camera, which impresses me. Set here at 1080p at 30fps, you can bump up the camera to 1440p at 30fps. And I've never come across a laptop with a 1440p camera before. You would expect 1080p in a reasonable laptop. 720 is definitely old school and not up to standard. 4K is something you pay a lot of money for. This, I like it. Acer's reviewer guide for this laptop refers to a number of pieces of software. Acer Care Center was not installed and we were unable to find it on Acer's website. It seems to have been replaced by Acer Sense, which is a user control panel that includes a live update feature. The live update had nothing to offer, but when we visited Acer's website and did a manual check, we found an update was available both for the camera driver and also for a BIOS file. Updating the BIOS manually was very straightforward. However, we imagine the average user wouldn't be too happy with this process, and we have to wonder why the Acer Sense live update didn't do the job for us. Once we'd updated the drivers and BIOS, we updated Windows, and then we were ready to proceed with performance testing. The first task was to run a reality check. Qualcomm's reviewer guide for the Snapdragon X processors gives some figures for Geekbench 6. We ran that benchmark, and our results fell exactly in line with Qualcomm's own figures. Next, we looked at Qualcomm's figures for Cinebench 2024. However, when we tried to run that piece of software, it threw up an error message about AVX2 and refused to start. This was obviously problematic. After that, we ran Cinebench 2023, that ran without any fault, and the figures seemed to be in line with our expectations. And with the appropriate caution in mind, let us proceed to our first test charts. Cinebench R23 Multicore. We can see here the Acer Swift 14 AI is way down the chart. It sits below an MSI Raider from 2022 with an Intel Core i9-12900HK and it sits above a PC Specialist Fusion 14 with an Intel Core i7-13700H. In other words, the score is competent, but nothing special. Cinebench R23 Single Core. Right down the bottom of the chart, it's the Acer Swift 14 AI. The Qualcomm Snapdragon X Plus X1P64100 is a 10 core processor. Put all 10 cores together, you have reasonable performance. A single core, not so much. Moving on to Ada 64 memory bandwidth. This is just an extraordinary result. The Hynix LP DDR5X runs incredibly fast and scores a massive 120 gigabits per second. The only explanation we have here is that the memory is acting in an eight channel kind of way. The read speeds are simply huge. 3D Mark CPU Profile. This is a very pleasing score. Not quite sure what the explanation might be, but the Acer Swift 14 AI with the Snapdragon X Plus does very well. And then we have 3D Mark Time Spy. This is the overall score, so we're combining both the CPU and the GPU. And we're down at the bottom of the chart, just below an Asus ZenBook with an Intel Core i7 11th Gen with Intel Xe graphics. It's a competent score, but it's certainly not special. Moving on to gaming and the situation becomes somewhat more complicated. It is clear from Qualcomm's reviewer's guide that this thin and light laptop form factor is not really intended for gaming. 
Not that they say that exactly, but just look at the list of suggested game titles. Intel addressed this point at their recent pre efa launch of Lunar Lake, where they said they'd had no difficulty comparing Lunar Lake with AMD in gaming. However, when it came to Qualcomm, plenty of games simply did not run. 68% faster than Qualcomm. And that was actually very difficult to measure because 23 games didn't run on the ARM processor. Gaming is more than just performance. Our investment in drivers and day zero game compatibility are a huge part of the experience for our customers. Let's see how the Acer performs in practice. And we'll start with Far Cry 6, which does indeed refuse to run. And then we'll move on to Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, which also fails to run. Next, we'll try Shadow of the Tomb Raider, an oldie but a goodie. And despite the error message, this game does actually run. We're using a resolution of 1080p and we've set the image quality to low and the benchmark chugs along steadily at 30 FPS. The final frame rate is passable, but this is not really a gaming experience you wish to endure. The curious thing is, according to Intel, Shadow of the Tomb Raider shouldn't run on Qualcomm at all. So let's try another game on that list. Let's try Cyberpunk 2077 on 1080p, low image quality. For some reason it's running in windowed mode, even though we've set the software to full screen. And once again we see about 30 FPS on average. And let's take a look at the AI side of things. PC Mark 10 was a dead end because it doesn't support ARM, and it was a similar story in UL Procyon with the AI image generation benchmark that also does not support ARM. Within Procyon, the video editing benchmark looked plausible. We have Adobe Premiere installed on this laptop. However, after a few minutes, that benchmark crashed. Finally, we got a result with the AI computer vision benchmark. We selected the Qualcomm option for this benchmark, and it chugged away for some minutes and eventually concluded and gave us a finishing score. So we did indeed get at least one result. We've all heard of the Silicon Lottery, but figuring out which software would run on this Qualcomm laptop, it was more like a game of roulette. Very strange experience. So what do I think of the Acer Swift 14 AI? Let, let me give you my pros and cons. Pros on the plus side, excellent battery life, genuine all day battery. Secondly, impressive Wi-Fi 7 connectivity. And thirdly, that 1440p webcam is very good. On 1080p it was good, on 1440p it was just something else. Cons, the negative points. And this is the real biggie. Software compatibility with Windows on ARM is very hit and miss. That situation is clearly changing, but right now you have no idea whether something will run or not. Secondly, the keyboard and touchpad are quite mediocre. Thirdly, and perhaps this is unfair, this thin and light laptop offers a very basic gaming experience. I think most of us can discount the gaming entirely. For £1,200, I think the laptop itself is absolutely fine. If I was confident every piece of software would run, whether very slowly or otherwise, I'd be happy with it. But the fact that various bits of software just don't run, that's a real problem. Overall, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. It's a worth considering.